I want to talk with you about you and help you get to where you're going. Point blank, period. The video you're about to see is likely more authentic than any video you've seen on this platform in about the past week. A couple of buddies of mine and I came up with this process called the value extraction process. Everyone has value to give to the world, but not very many people know exactly what that value is. So what we came up with is here to completely eliminate that problem. Everyone has that burning flame inside of them that wants to give to the world, that wants to take all the challenges that they've been given, overcome them and continue to live their desired life. But that flame gets put out harshly by society and we are here to rekindle it. We're here to reinitiate that flame and show you the value you have to give. I've devoured my life to this practice, the selfless act of service of genuinely helping one another break ourselves down so we can build ourselves up. The reality is probably nobody in your immediate life has time to sit down with you one-on-one -on -one and take you through your own life, take you through what you've overcome, help you get to where you're going. They don't have the time to devour to you, not only because they don't devour their lives to such a practice, but they have their own lives going on too. They have their struggles and issues. I'm just a regular guy. My credentials are as shown in the videos that I'm about to post. I've overcome a lot of things in my life and I wanna help others do the same and help them gain a little bit of direction in their life because I've been able to gain a lot in a short amount of time. I wanna talk with you about you and help you get to where you're going, point blank, period. Also, what I'm offering goes way beyond just one process of value extraction. This would be weekly calls and consultations, being able to hit me up whenever, and daily accountability messages directly from me. Things in this service would include helping you break down your limiting beliefs, taking you through reflective dialogue to show you what you've had to overcome to get to this point, talking about the ideas that you have boiling in your mind and how we can alchemize them into reality. For the longest time, I just wanted someone to hold me accountable. For the longest time, I just wanted someone who I felt like was genuinely there to help me out. For the longest time, I just wanted someone who I could genuinely talk about my struggles with and have them offer help, solutions, and a way to go forward. I want to be that person for you. I want to help you in any way that I can. If you're interested in such a service, comment your Instagram handle so I can hit you up personally or hit me up on Instagram at raincordio. Text me the word value. Another option is you can email me directly at my email here. Send me whatever you want to send me and we will conversate back and forth. This isn't something that I'm putting a direct price on. I want to work with you with whatever your financial situation is. I, I'm, I'm here to help you. It's as simple as that. So please enjoy the following value extraction. And thank you guys for tuning in. Much love. Appreciate it. And anyone who partakes in these interviews and is seeing this right now, I encourage, I encourage you to be open enough to let this be shared on, on social media, on YouTube, on whatever you want to put it on or on whatever we're going to put it on, because to be able to look back at this, at least in the community, let us share it because to be True. able to look back at this, you're going to have, you're going to want it. You're going to want it. You're going to want to be able to see it. I know I do. And I know I will for sure. How so many people to not only express themselves but to kind of put the, one of the biggest forms of accountability out there like your entire story in life laid out in front of you and it's like this is my starting point because this is what i declared like where can i go from here it's like because it's like the more vulnerable you are the more you'll get out of it yeah and that's why, like, I, that's why i did leave with that vulnerability to show others that it's okay to do the same it's the only thing that's really going to help you acknowledging those things for real and understanding that someone in front of you can reconcile with it because they've been through it too. You're not that different, bro. I promise. It's about what really drove you to become that best version of you. You had to go through within. You were too often attempting to help so many other people when you realized the only way you could truly help them was by prioritizing and helping yourself first and understanding that gaining life experience is really the only way that you're going to get to exert that main driver, that main flame that's really initiated within you. That being said, we did, discover, we did discover that you're attaining and always attempting to attain that best version of self, but what does he look like? What does he do every day? If you could best describe it, use that imagination, man. 
in all honesty, <laughs> like not to be like stereotypical and uh, I don't know, I'm trying to think of the word probably hasn't been invented yet. But I was gonna say one of my biggest goals in life is to live like Christ. So mm -hmm. it's like in a funny and adult way, I want myself to be kind of, you could say in a, a way incarnation of Christ where it's like, I want to be able to help everyone around me. And whenever I come into the room, the atmosphere just changes and shifts because everyone just knows like I'm the type of person to bring that gratitude, bring that joy, bring that love, bring that presence where it's just like, oh, he's here. My life will get better just by being around him. Not just because like I'm going to help them, but it's just like I want my presence to be a conviction into the hearts of everyone that is around me that like, Not only can you do better, but because I'm here, you better be doing better. Like, like not like in a mean way, but it's just like, because that's like one thing, like, you can say it's like some of the people like I've grown around and it's kind of like me becoming more vulnerable has allowed me to become that type of person for them. Like one of the camps that I worked at, it's like whenever the kids were being bad, you could say with the other counselors, I would walk into the room and they would just start being good. Like not in the sense of just like, oh, go sit down and stop talking. It's just like, there would just be a joy there because they knew that they can come to me and they can tell me anything, but like they can go express themselves. And if they're doing something wrong, like they know like, okay, I'm gonna stop doing it. Cause I don't wanna, I don't wanna let Peter down. So it's like, I want to be the type of person where every time someone sees me, they want to become the best versions of themselves because they know if they're not, it's kind of like, they're going to let me down, but in a sense, they're going to let themselves down. So it's like, in a sense, them trying to prove themselves to me is them trying to prove themselves to like to their own selves. So it's like, I want to be like in a, manif a manifestation or incarnation of just conviction for like the human heart. Because you're always going to acknowledge those things within them. Because it's like, yeah. And it's just like showing them the ability to overcome those things. Mm -hmm. It's just like, okay, now you just don't want to do it if you're not doing it. But it's like, if you're not doing it, I'm not going to hate you. But I just, I'm going to try to help you do it. Man, you just like, you just inspired me to go be a freaking camp counselor whenever I get the chance. Now I'm Bro, it is amazing because for me, it was hilarious because the other counselors doing it just saw like, and at one point it would be like me and like 20 kids and they would be like freaking out, like yelling at the kids to do everything. But for me, I just saw it like, I'm like, dang, this is like 20 different, like it was a game of chess. I'm like, this is 20 different characteristics all doing 20 different things and you have to get every single one of them organized with pure will, not like force or threat. It's just like with pure will, getting them all to agree. And it's just beautiful being able to see like, you can get different people, different aspects. Cause you know, the parents had influences to all agree on a certain thing, which was literally everyone reaching, like that would be the goal. Like regardless of what activity or what we were doing, it was just like, what will make everyone happy? And to see that we can all reach that with kids It's just like, if we're not reaching it as parents, like, you guys are just very, like, egotistical. Like, so it was just, like, amazing to see that. And to, like, for me, it's like, I always, kids will always, like, be gravitated towards me because it's like, I don't have that judgment or I don't have that, you could say, strict in, um, expectation. And even, like, with younger family members, There's times like they come up to me and they're like, I did this. And I'm like, boy, you better, that's something you better take to your grave. And it's not <laughs> saying like, in the sense of like, they're doing things that are bad, but it's like, what I realized is when you judge someone, you've basically given them a mask to wear in front of you. So like every time you judge someone for something that they did or something that they are, They know that to not be judged when they come near you, they must place a mask on themselves to get your approval. And like, I mean, I did that as a kid. Like that was something I was like, oh, if I want to be around this type of person, this is the mask I needed. And I went through like different situations with whether it was like family or closed one. And it was just like, I felt like a circus clown. because I was like, well, I'm going to this person. This is the mask I need. I'm going to this person. This is the mask I need. And 
they never got to see the actual Peter. Mm. And uh, that happens to a lot of kids and it happens to a lot of us in today's society. Like we wear the masks of the people that we needed to be and not the people we actually are. Yo, that's cool. That was like eloquently put, bro, because I've been there. I think a lot, like you, you, you said it yourself, so many of us have like, I remember that and I remember changing it and deciding to just be the light as it, anywhere I could go, which obviously as attempting to live like Christ, which I also reconcile with, you have prioritized. And man, that's so respectable. Um, this actually is a great segue. Like most of this comes from what we missed as a child. You know, I, we tend to we tend to understand. You're actually someone who helped me realize that. And that being said, like, what is your most authentic desire? Like, what did four year old you want? What did young you really, really want in the world, in his life? And if you know that's hard to pinpoint, what would you say he needs most from you? To be honest, it, those are like I have two answers. He would want you could say what he lacked like and it's like not like to be like sad or depressing but it kind of is sad and depressing because he would want to express joy and bring like happiness to people because a lot of times like he didn't really receive it and it wasn't just that too it's like at a young age I could see through the masks so I could see through the charades and I realized that not only was I wearing it but a lot of people around me wearing were wearing it for each other. So it's like members of your family that you've known for years that you spend time with, like they're all wearing masks around each other and no one's being vulnerable. So it's just like, I wanted to be the type of person that I never had where I could really lower that mask or tell my younger self like, hey, like take that mask off because I won't judge what's behind it or I won't push away what's behind it. Even though he saw everyone else around him doing it, it's just like, I wanted to be the type of person where he saw and he could take it off with no regret, no fear, no remorse. And that's like the type of person like, and I even say it like, tell people that I'm like, I want to be that role model that I never really had. And not just to myself, but to all the other people around me. And so that's why I want to be that person where when people see me walking, they're like, oh, it's Peter. Like, I can take my mask off. Like, oh, like it's Peter. Like, if I have a wound, he's going to try to help me heal. Like, I want to be that type of person for other people. Because it's like, I didn't have it in a sense. So it's like, I knew it was possible, but it just was not being done. So, <laughs> and like they say, if you can't change the world, then you change yourself. And in doing so, the world around you will change. I think that's how the saying goes. If it doesn't go that way, I'm stealing it. And that's my new quote. So for me, it was just like, I wanted it so badly. And it's like, I would dream of it. I'm like, dang, I would wish someone like this would exist that would just never judge me and would just accept me for who I am so I can actually tell him or her my pain and help me through and understand it rather than hide behind a mask. And that person just wasn't there. And it's like, the funny thing is the harder I wished, the more it hurt because the person wasn't there to the point where it was like, I can either keep on wishing, I could either become a, be a dreamer <laughs> or I could be a doer. So it's like, if you want it so bad, then go be it. Like, it was just like waking up that one day. Like, if you really want someone that doesn't judge in life, then you can never judge. Like, you can never really hate because you would not, like that's not the type of person who you want to be or be around. So you can't even have any part of you be that. And there'd be times where I would get into like arguments or altercations with family members and I would just stay silent and stare because I knew the power of the tongue and I knew once you said something, it could never be taken back. So for me, I knew they, it's like not trying to put them down, but it's like I knew they didn't know any better, but I did. Like regardless of if I was seven, eight, or nine, I knew that the hatred words that I said would cause some sort of scar. And I was okay with getting all those scars because I was like, I understand like where they're coming from. From a flawed place. They yeah, man. Wow. When you said, uh, I want people to see me. And think, 
hey, that's Peter. I can take my mask off. Or, hey, that's Peter. I can, he can help me heal. I, I can be okay. I can be vulnerable around him. You're taking the words right out of my heart, man. Like, seriously, like, dude, eloquently put. Like, you definitely have a power of the tongue, most definitely. And you're using it for some amazing things is what it seems like. So, dude, I encourage you to keep going with that and not get lost in any thoughts of in yourself that make you believe you don't because you're already affecting me here. And I know you know you're affecting many, many others. So that's beautiful, man. Like, what really made you stick in this pursuit you're in right now? And why do you really think it's most aligned with your purpose? Uh, not to be contradicting to my beliefs, <laughs> but I went through a hard time in life where I kind of threw it all away and said I was going to be the complete opposite. <laughs> and it was funny because it was like, I was like, hey, if you ever hear the devil's advocate, I was like, you know what? I'm going to be the devil's advocate. I'm yeah. Gonna be the advocate. yeah. Where, and this is the thing, though. It's like, if you live in your truth, it's effort and e it's effortless and easy. But if like if you deny yourself of your truth, it's kind of like walking with a thorn in your shoe and trying to act like it's not there. Like you know you're going against your purpose. You know you're doing the things that you shouldn't be doing. And for me, every time I would do something along those lines, <laughs> and then just not to be goofy, but it's like that's um young Peter, if you can see him. Yeah. So that's young Peter. So it's like every time I do one of those, like I would do one of those things, whether it was good or not good, but whether it was bad or just completely out of selfish desire, like I could literally see the younger version of me just like sitting there and just being like, well, oh, okay, I guess I can't put my mask. I guess I can't take my mask off around you if you're going to really like, if you're going to fit back into society. And it's kind of funny because it's like every time I would do one of those things, it was kind of like, I'm making my, I'm literally putting the mask back on my younger self's face that I told it to take off. So it's like by contradicting myself, I was becoming what I hated or what I didn't believe in. And it's like, it was like, I, I convicted myself back into it. <laughs> it was like, okay, like, ah, uh -huh, you tried to be bad, but you know, you're not. So, <laughs> so it's like an inside joke. Cause it's like, whenever I try to be bad or try to do something that's dumb or stupid, it's just like, I don't even have to ask. be like, oh, you're not doing it. Oh, like you shouldn't be doing that. It's like, I already know I'm not like, I'm being stupid. Like, of course I know what I'm doing. Like any L that I take from here, I can't have any hatred in my heart because it was completely by me. Like, so being bad for me is a joke, honestly, because it's like, I know it's something that I'm not. And whenever I try to be, like, I know everything that stems from it is a consequence of what I did. So that's what, keep, that's what keeps me going. The inability to be bad and cruel is what enables me to be kind and genuous and the opposite. That's beautiful, bro. Like, we don't even know each other that well. I want to keep that. I want to keep that preface. But we met in the same community. And you had mentioned that that was your lock screen, bro. You inspired me, bro. That's me when I'm little. That right there says, pick him up. He's down. You need to pick him up. And I get to look at that every time I look at my screen. It's, I appreciate you for, for, for showing that to me, like, in general. Like, it, it really shows that, like, we really are on this journey, all helping ourselves overcome what we wish we would have seen as a child. And the fact that you acknowledge that so deeply it's definitely going to help people in the future. It's, it's something that needs to be acknowledged more. And the fact that you decide to do it actively, that's already a lot of value you have to provide the world, to the world, man. Oh, yeah. But oh, yeah. like, one of my main goals is literally like, is being that, because you know how, a lot, like I said, I put up that unpenetrable force mm -hmm. and nothing could get through it besides the words that tore me down. I want to do the complete opposite where no matter how strong someone's shield is, like my very words just penetrates right through it. And it's kind of like saying like, you know, you're loved, right? Like you went through a, a terrible thing and in some shape or form, like your mind is stuck somewhere in your past. Cause that's what it is. Like 
a lot of times you may be 40 years old, but your mind is still at that 10 year old traumatic event that you never overcame. So right now you're a 10, you're a 10 year old with a 40 year old man's body. Your actions are the actions of that, of that 10 year old. And you don't even realize it. Like, yes, you have the information, you have the knowledge, but because you don't have the wisdom, <laughs> you have the wisdom of a 10 year old and the knowledge of a 40 year old. <laughs> Man, that's why they call it Peter Pan syndrome. It's it's that fear of going within. That's the only way you can actually grow. It's one of the greatest fears. And it's like we all have to overcome some sort of aspect of it. And like even like to kind of push back to what you said earlier, it's like some of us have it deeper than others. So it's like the bigger or harder battles you overcome and even help other people overcome, it just makes you that much more qualified to help even more people. Because it's like, there's things that I've been through that when someone, I talk to someone and I tell them, they're like, oh, like what I'm going in through right now, like that's nothing. But there's times where it's like, I'm the one that's the lightweight. Like there's times where I'm the one that's like, geez, like, like I really, like there's times people have told me things, I'm like, I really need you to guide me to how you got there. Like, I know it's gonna hurt, but like, I'm going to be right there next to you. Just guide me to where you got there, how you got there. And let's walk out of it together. I'm writing that out of my notes, bro. Cause that's an amazing thing to say to people when you really don't know what to say. Seriously. Cause you don't, that's the thing. You don't really know what to say and you can't say, I understand. And that's one of the biggest things that a lot of them, um, I think what drives parents away from kids is just because you've gone through life doesn't mean you've gone through like all the experiences so there's things that your kids are going through that they parents don't understand. And when the kid says like you don't understand why you're going what I'm going through, it's a cry for like it's a cry for help almost like you haven't yes. been through this, but I really need someone who does. Like and the parents are are blinded by their ego or blinded by that image where they're like, Oh, you're just trying to shut me out. Like they are shutting you out because you haven't given them a reason to open up in a sense. So and generations are so different. Like from generation to generation, like we do have genuinely different struggles than some of our parents did. Like they didn't have such mass access to things like information overload and pornography. So so many yeah. different aspects. And, and like I said, and like even in today's society, the reason a lot of kids have depression is because it's a higher level of suffering. Like the parents had physical, a lower vibration, you could say, of suffering where having to wake up really early, having to do this. We didn't have to do that. We were born in luxury, which means now our suffering is going to be more internal than external. We're not going to have to worry about our environment outside of us because it's already been taken care of. Now yeah, we're going to yeah. have that. Now we're going to have the time to actually dive deep in, but we aren't taught how to do so. So now we're giving a bigger battle. <laughs> with none of the resources to do so. So it's because definitely I mean, like you said, say that again? Go ahead, brother. Oh, no, I said it's definitely a different level, like you said, with each generation. And it's like, it just gets harder and harder because it's like, as we become more luxurious and get more of our like daily necessities taken care of, it really means that we have to pay even more attention to the mind. Like now we're not just acting out of, a reaction and our outside source it's like no like now like every decision you made can be calculated you have the time to think so so like your mind becomes a lot more stronger and more dangerous than you think yeah. in those observations we also see that with all the time that they spent building the comfortability around them they were avoiding it the internal they really were. And you can see that anytime you try to even poke at it, it's kind of like driving a bear with a stick. Like it's met with extreme emotion, extreme, like either whether it's anger, fear of vulnerability, or just like pain, sadness, because they don't even really know how to express it. Two different, <laughs> two different cultures, two different languages trying to have a conversation. <laughs> Yeah, man. Like, so that's in and of itself. Like, most of the things that you're saying are resonating really deeply with me. And I know they will with other people. And I appreciate you for, it, like, having that vulnerability aspect to, you know, show people that they can be too. 
if this is a great segue to the questions we were talking about the younger self so if you could tell him one sentence one thing like you know 10 20 words maybe not even mm-hmm. what would you say to your younger self mm, as i handed him over my autobiography <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, the do's in life of don'ts by Peter Charles. Read it, memorize it. <laughs> um, Yo, <laughs> definitely, bro. Uh, let's we, see. We could all but fucking do if we could, man. No, I'm honestly, I would have a, I would have a series, a whole Netflix series made into a CD. <laughs> Did I make a, <laughs> I'd make a cartoon for him. I make cartoons. I'd be like, you better bro. watch just like you watch Veggie Tales, and you better memorize each one. <laughs> yeah, man. If you could really condense that to one sentence, what would you tell him? Mm. Dang. If I was to shove Think all of that, say it again. Think on it for a second. No rush, my man. Okay. Ooh, I got it. I got it. It would be almost poetic. So it would be, you are who you are because that's who you need to be. And all the wrongs that you see are all the rights that you need to make up. You would have have sparked that flame a a little bit earlier, huh? I would have definitely sparked that flame a little bit earlier. I would have been next to my mom's belly as a baby whispering it. <laughs> Yo, seriously, bro. I would have been like, I'm sorry. I know you don't know me, but I need to whisper this to your kid in your stomach real quick, man. And then she's going to be like, Yo, was that? <laughs> Yo, man. Not she'd be you. like, So that's who that guy like 20 years ago was. <laughs> man, imagine if we really had the chance. But hey, we did have to go through what we did go through to get to this point. So I'm sure we're grateful, but it's also just an amazingly framed question because, you know, that can really draw out of somebody what, you know, they value the most. So like, since we've gotten open, since we've gotten a bit more deep here, I want to ask, what are you most truly afraid of in this life? What, what is your biggest fear in a sense? It can be spiders, it can be external, or it can be something that, you know, an internal state within anything. Heights, <laughs> whatever you can think of, bro. But it has to hit deep. Mm. I have, but I'm trying to translate it into English. From from feelings? Uh, from feelings and thoughts into English. <laughs> yeah, makes sense. I, at first, when you told me that, I was like, "Is he? does he speak a different language? And I was like, nope. He did well, I do speak-, speak a different language, but I try to think in English because then it gets confusing. Oh, what, what, what was your first language? Oh, Creole. No way! Oh, yeah, Haitian Creole. Because I was born in Haiti. But I'm like one of the least Haitianiest Haitians that you'll ever meet, according to all my friends. Very English is better than mine, and I was. Oh like, no, I'm saying it. I'm saying in the sense of like Haitians are very cultural and very like strict and kind of like mean and straightforward, and I'm kind of like a passive, kinder, yeah. like more gentle person. So a contradicting. Say that again. Great. Generally, you speak amazing English. I just wanted to put that in. I didn't mean to interrupt you, though. Go ahead. Oh, no, you're good. Dang, I'm really trying to think. Wait, rephrase the question or ask me it one more time so then I can... What's your biggest fear? What are you truly afraid of in this life?
Okay, I got it. So my greatest fear, and I'll say it in a poetry or a poetic way and then kind of translate it because then it helps me keep my thoughts together. So it's to live a lie and die in truth. And it's, and it's because, like I said, like with my whole past younger self, like, If you were to combine the mask, if you were to combine the shells and the shields, it was like, at the end of the day, it was all protecting the truth of what was really inside. And in doing so, you were living in a lie. So it's like, if I was to really like go, the true Peter would have been one of those lost tales in time, not really expressed. So it's like, regardless of all the things I was doing, I was never doing it like for the real me. It's like, even if you were helping all these other people, if you were helping them all with a mask on your face, that's who they would recognize, the stranger that you were expressing, not the person you really were. So one of my biggest fears is just helping others doing things, but it's like never really being able to fully express myself. Cause it's like, then it's like, I never would have lived like, cause it's like, if no one ever really knows the real you, you never really lived, you never really existed. So you lived the lie and died in truth. So that would be like one of my biggest fears. So taking that regret on with you on your deathbed. Taking that. that and that's, and one thing I could summarize it is this guy that went on a nursing home and he interviewed a whole bunch of different old people. And he said, one of the biggest things, the question was, what's the one thing you regretted in life? And the answer almost always came back to the one thing that I never did. And for me, I'm like, if I would ever lived in truth, like how big of a regret would that have been to literally say Peter never lived, <laughs> even though he was alive and a lot of us do it. Like <laughs> most of us do it, man. Most of us do it. Like if I was to go and especially like, I know with cultured kids because of how strong their heritage and culture and beliefs are, they are for a spirit, uh, A period of their time and it's not just culture kids it's a lot of kids like they go out into college and become someone crazy because that's the one time they're sold is to express freedom so they don't know how to monitor because it's never been controlled so it's like a lot of times kids go off to college that's when they get to express the freedom they get to open up the shell but that's when they get the biggest pain the biggest hurt because they've never been Like, in, it is sad because it's like the parents send the kids off with all the pride and hope and love, but it's like you sent off, you sent off who wasn't really in there. Like you sent off the wolf in sheep's clothing or the sheep in wolf's clothing. Actually, yes, you, sh you sent off the sheep in wolf's clothing, not the wolf in sheep's clothing. You sent off someone completely fragile and vulnerable into a very dangerous environment. And... Once they took the covers off and society realized there was a sheep, it fed on them without remorse. And imagine you're the parent that hears your kid came back from college and it was either a guy or girl that was raped or you hear a worse news where they ended their life because they couldn't handle the stress of society or you even hear they're someone completely different. And the thing that's sad though, it's, Just because you become someone different, your parents are allowed to be sad. But it doesn't make it okay. It's like, like that's where it starts getting like crazy. Cause it's like, let's say you go to college and you become someone different. When you come back, your parents are sad. They are allowed that sadness because you lied to them. Even though they were strict on you, you still lied to them. So their sadness is coming from that lie you gave them. Just like your sadness is coming from that truth that they didn't allow you to express. Like you're both harming each other. So the parents that don't allow the kids to express themselves are creating a sadness that will come back to them. And the same kids that are too fearful to express themselves to their parents 
are creating a lie and sadness that their parents weren't expecting as well. So it's like you're both harming each other. Like you think it's the parents that are the bad guy and the kids that like, no, like if you look at a lot of the movies, if you were to be put in both people's perspectives, a lot of times the superheroes and the super villains are the super are their own superheroes and super villains. It's like Yeah, so man. that's one of the biggest things I think a lot of people need to realize is just that yes, they caused you pain. but you have to kind of like override it for yourself. And it's kind of like that if you want to speed, like if you want to see the world change and you can't change it, you change yourself. And in doing so, the world changes around you. Because if you don't and you let the world beat up on you, then the world that beat up on you will get depressed and sad once it sees how damaged you are. So... And it'll take you adrift. You won't know. You'll wake up wondering how you got here rather than getting to choose where you go. It's a beautiful thing to see the, the good side of that. And it seems to me like you found the secret in using that fear and anxiety as a freaking indicator of exactly what you need to go towards. And that is respectable and admirable, man. Thank you, thank you. It took a lot of anguish and like literally when I told you I had to literally break like imagine it was an amazing sculpture. I was like, well, beautiful, but it's not me. Break it completely apart and rebuild it from scratch. And that's like still being done to this day. I mean, we're always constantly building ourselves. But it was just the fact that like so much had to be broken. I was like, dang, like I thought I knew myself at one point and I didn't even know that. So It just shows like how much growth you can go through, but you only go through it once you take that initiative to go inside. That's scary. Go go inside. Meet that boogeyman. That's what they Face the unknown with courage, yeah. Honestly. Man, so this is a perfect segue. I mean, you mentioned that your kind of purpose was to live like Christ, to do your best to be an incarnation of such consciousness levels of such things. But I want to ask to encompass this all, Peter, Why why do you genuine why do you genuinely believe you were put on this earth? Why does Peter why was Peter put here? Honestly, <laughs> not in a in a funny sense. To allow people to die, <laughs> not in, not in like a bad sense. Because, Oh, to, mm, I get what you mean. one Oh, of go the ahead and things explain. you hear in the Bible is that to be reborn, you have to die. And it's like the old self dying and you're basically born again. And when you're born again, and a lot of times people wait for that, um, people wait for that um, spiritual deep feeling to come within. But it actually happens when you fully understand and practice it. And it's kind of like I said, like we wear these masks to live in a lie and die in truth. That's basically the same thing. Because when Yep, you die, I when you felt live that. that false version of yourself or that weird, the one that you weren't was die, then your real version lives. So you flip the switch. So instead of living in a lie and dying in truth, your lie dies and your truth lives. So it's like you flip the switch, you literally are met. And that's when you actually get that spiritual feeling that you think Explain, you're going to bro. get. It happens when you do the work. Not <laughs> And a lot of times, this is the best way I'm going to compare it, which is hilarious. And it's a funny story. It's a lady that's like, Lord, I want you to give me the courage to fight a snake. And she looks to her right on her foot. Oh, can you still hear me? Oh, can you still hear One me? more time? Okay, gotcha. All right. No, Bad cut I out. think I'm, I'm apologize. Yeah, my bad. Go ahead. Okay, you good. All right. So I was going to say the best way I can compare it to is a, a funny story with a lady that's like, Lord, I want you to give me the ability to fight a snake, to give me the courage to fight a snake. And she looks to her right and there's a snake crawling on her foot. And she kicks it away, screams, runs her away. And is like, oh my gosh, why would you do that to me? And we have to realize that 
the moment you ask for that one thing, you have to understand that like overcoming it is what gives you the ability. So when you ask God for courage or when you ask him for strength, you're going to be put in places that are the opposite because you have yeah. to create it through. You have to manifest the thing you want God, like God to give you through your free will. It's his, well, he will give you as the experience or the situation and your free will has to overcome it for you to gain it. So if you want the courage, he's going to put you in a situation where you're weak. And once you overpower it, you're strong. If you're fear, if you're fear, you want courage, he will put you in a place where fear is overcoming you and you free willingly make the decision choice to overcome it. And then that's when you gain the courage. Until you actually face it, you'll actually never get that thing. So it's like that divine moment you want is literally kept by your free will. And <laughs> everything you're searching for was well, right in front of you. But the thing is, I love that, Peter, because I had stated my purpose in the interview you did to me was to help people overcome the darkness, right? And, bro, you literally explained it perfectly. Like, we're given false lights to overcome them and find our light within. Because until you find that light or until you search for that light, you're never really going to have it. But you're always going to want it. It's like you have to do the work to acquire it, to get it. Man. So, well, we are, we are the gatekeepers to ourselves, which is hilarious. Like all the things you want to like the courage you want in life, the bravery, the stage fright that you have is because you don't want to conquer that stage until you really want to like some people have to be like pushed into a corner to get it but for me it's like I realized that a lot of the things that I wasn't getting in life was because I wasn't doing the actions not because I couldn't because it's like until you're six feet under where it's too late to really do anything and you can have all the regret and remorse like nothing really on earth is stopping you <laughs> from getting to where you want to get besides yourself like the family love that you want, the friendships that you need. Like, you know, in your head, you have the ideas. And you know it's either the people you need to cut off or the family members that you have to stand up to. Like, you know. But the decision is so hard. But that's the free will. It's just that now we're in a society where the negative overpowers the positive. So it's a lot easier to be subdued by our fears than to overcome it with our strengths. You want to help people get out of that mindset and free them, essentially, right? Oh, yeah. I want to do that. Yeah. Some people might get mad. Like, that's why when I talk to a lot of people, I'm like, some, like, I can't even open this door for you yet because, you know, like, you're on a level one and you're asking me to open a level nine. Like, I'm not dumb. Like, go back to your level one because you're going to be worse. Like, go open your level one door and then open your level two door and then you're open your level three door. But I'm going to guide you through the whole way. Like... Like, because this is the thing I realized, and one of the reasons why I started enjoying life more, because I was doing it. Like, I was fast forwarding to a lot of the end parts. Like, I was putting my body on autopilot and coming back into consciousness when I got to where I wanted to be. And when I would go back and try to relive the stories, I was like, dang, I wasn't there for the stories. I was just focused about the end goal. I blurred everything out. I fast forwarded to the end. And I'm like, dang, was I about to do that with life? <laughs> was I about to just zoom out and zone out and just work a nine to five until I got to where I think I needed to be with no stories to tell, no nothing? I'm like, no, the purpose of life is the stories. Like, And a lot of people say it, but we don't really emphasize how important it is. It's literally you waking up today and throwing your shoes on backwards because you thought it would be funny. That itself is a story that is etched into your memory because you had the free will to do so. You're driving to work and you decided, I'm going to stop and get McDonald's and just get something from the kids meal because I can, not because like, like I need to eat food. It's just like I can buy food because you have to realize like you're orchestrating your life. And so many times we just let it be orchestrated, orchestrated by the world around us. I wonder why our life was so valueless. Yeah, yeah, because you were the orchestrator and you let someone else control your band. Like you had all the music, you had all the tools, you had all the instruments. And then you're letting someone else 
play your symphonies and wondering why you don't like the tunes. <laughs> You're like, I don't like the way the song sounds, but I'm letting other people play it for me. Well, no, duh. I don't like my life, but I'm not making any decisions for myself. Well, no, duh. <laughs> Man, I think that's a perfect way to conclude this. And first of all, the way we've set up these questions is just phenomenal. Uh, how do you think we should end these? Really? I was like, going to say, in all honesty, I think once we've like pulled out the life force in people and have them hold it there in their hands, it's like, now grab those tools and see how you can implement it into the community. Like everything that you've overcome now and all the skills that you're trying to acquire, it's like now you have a place where you can basically use as your canvas. Like you can literally do whatever or however you think like you can express yourself and we have your full, like you have our full support to do so. I'm not like even, reminding of that. I'm not even gonna say anything because I'm gonna, I'm gonna put that clip that you just said right there at the end of both of our interviews. So, because that's that was perfect, and I think it's gonna be a great call to action for people. It is because imagine like because it's gonna see because imagine it's gonna be cringy for some people because they're gonna see something they haven't really ever seen before, like vulnerability, and like we have it in Two Cut University, but it's not based around that. Like it's mostly based on like the um kind of like growing. And like financial like motivation like kind of helping you find your purpose but it's like more external yeah so like for me like and that's kind of like for me like why i don't really focus when i'm talking to certain people just about like the spirituality religion things of man because i'm like i'm gonna help you master yourself like you can go have fun and experience and do the different beliefs but with me like we're gonna fight <laughs> we're gonna tackle the temple that's in front of me and that's like my whole part. That's my that's my Jesus walk. Dude. <laughs> hey bro, do you after this, how are you feeling about this community? After like because I'm not gonna lie, me and Michael being the the real people who have like people who put this into action for this to happen and, and brought y'all on and stuff, like it's a lot easier for me to see the the like whoa in it, but like I wanna know like how are you really feeling about this? And I honestly, like, I was gonna say after this, like before this interview, I would say like it was kind of like when I first started my book interviews, I'm like, I could see what it could become, like all the passions and potentials. But it's like now it's like, okay, now I know what it can become. So it's like dreaming to doing. It's like instead of seeing and understanding and trying to comprehend, it's like now I've had the experience and it's like, okay. Like now it could become something even greater. Cause once something is in the tangible world and it's been manifested. You can see this like, now. You can see this now. Oh, oh yeah, God. now we can see it now. So now the imagination is even stronger than before. Bro, and this is gonna help Ace and Michael like exponentially and everyone, everyone, man. Fuck yeah, dude. Send me this as soon as you can. Like if you oh, yeah, for it, sure. If you can zip this up tonight, send it my way. Oh yeah, I'm, I'm about to say that again. I'm gonna get it pushed out by Sunday. Sir, I'm gonna I'm gonna start the video with like a, a call to action, and a uh you know just me me talking, explaining what this is, and have the link, man. All right, because I was gonna say I think it said I think it separates the audio from the video, so it'll they'll both be in there together. Oh yeah yeah chilling chilling. Oh, you mean like I'm gonna have to put one on top of the other? Yeah, that's fine. Okay. Um, I'll just say because I have the tools on my computer too, because I have um Premiere Pro. So if you yeah. need that, I can just give you my login if you need, if you don't use that. Cause I have um I'll let you know, bro. I'll okay, let you know. Gotcha. I can definitely edit this shit. But um that being said, me and Michael are gonna have an interview in person on Saturday. So we're gonna do our value extraction processes like face to face. And we met online, Ooh. dude. That's gonna be pretty I, cause for me it's like it makes it even more tangible, bro. That again? 
It makes it even more tangible. Oh, yeah, no. And I was going to say, like, when I talk to people, that's why I like doing talks rather than, like, just recording myself on, like, YouTube videos. There's just a different emotion there because you can actually, like, feel the energy compared to where you're just talking. Because I told someone, I'm like, when I record a YouTube video of knowledge that I know, I feel like I'm just being like, I speak English. I speak English. Yeah. I speak English. It's like saying things that are already in my head. So my body's like, dude, you know, we already know this. And I know we're recording it for people, but this feels redundant. Like, because I've gotten to, say it again. Because you feel as though you're not actively helping. Yeah, because I've gotten to the point where like now I can kind of start separating my mind from body. And it's weird because now my feelings and urges are more external where I know it's how my body talks to myself, the consciousness of how it feels and what it wants to experience. And like I told a lot of people this, like that I've spoken to recently, I'm like, I honestly think the consciousness is the guardian angel for the body, the flesh. And oh, yeah. based on the decision it makes, makes I either the angel or the demon like makes Bro, it yeah, it's like good kundalini, or the kundalini snake energy like wh where are you gonna allow your to go at the yes, place and it's like low, you're really you're low. really the guide of the flesh like your job is no. to monitor the flesh you know what i realized in interpreting the bible jesus had to search long years through the desert and eventually he found god at the top of a mountain all that is is an allegory for higher states of consciousness and being going from lost to found, it's it's beautiful, man. Well, I, I was gonna say I don't have to meet him because I'm like I'm just gonna become <laughs> exactly. You're gonna just be at that heightened height level. Are you gonna be at that heightened level? As long as I don't start, as long as I don't start doing miracles, that's the only thing. Because then I don't want people to start worshiping. <laughs> yeah, and I'm like, well, well, there, there, there he goes. He went from being inspirational to being another religion hopefully not no we're not doing that stuff here no nah, i'm gonna be like you know what i'm gonna uh, as soon as you touch me i'm gonna show you goal. how you could become me exactly your whole goal is to show it that that's it that is within them hell yeah bro and it's getting late for you i know it is for me this was perfect it couldn't have gone better bro seriously oh yeah no sorry i sorry i, I kind of i was like i kept looking at it too i was like okay it says recording and then when I really 